Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be working on one of David's projects. He has an 05 GMC Sierra. And the other day he came over because he has some looseness in the front end. Some thing has about, what, 160,000 miles? Uh, Something like that? Yeah. Okay. So we diagnosed it as a rack and pinion. Actually, just the inner tie rods, but we're going to replace the whole rack and pinion and the outer tie rods. So. We're gonna jack this thing up and show you how we diagnosed it, and then we'll go ahead and get started on the installation. Okay, so we went ahead and jacked it up. Now, for checking ball joints, you don't want, this is just for demonstration. If you're checking for ball joint wear, you wanna put the jack underneath the control arm, and then you'll get your pry bar and just lift up on it, and you'll have to use two people because uh, you want somebody to be looking at the ball joint and seeing if it's moving within the inside of the ball joint, upper and lower. So you'll have somebody lifting up on the tire and then you'll have somebody else looking at the ball joint. And then for your inner and outer tie rods, you just want to shake the tire back and forth and you'll see either the inner tie rod moving if it's worn or you'll see the outer uh, tie rod joint moving. You'll just see the, the movement within the joint. You wanna make sure you're not turning this hard enough to turn the whole steering wheel. You just wanna shake it a little bit. And then the upper and lower control arm bushings, you can just visually check those if they're starting to push out and crack and all that, you know they're worn. And then for the hub bearing, you grab the upper and lower and shake it like that. And if you feel any movement in the wheel, and you see the rotor in the wheel moving, then that's gonna be your bearing. So that's gonna be it for that. Let's go ahead, we're gonna take the splash shield off, or the skid plate off, and then go ahead and get started on the rack and pinion. So for the guys at home trying to save some money and do this on their own, we'll go ahead and let you guys know all the bolt sizes and everything, step-by-step -step process. Uh, take the wheels off, you're gonna need a 22 millimeter socket and we just use an impact but uh 22 millimeter take the wheels off next up we're gonna get the we're gonna get the skid plate off next this is the skid plate i was talking about now not all trucks would have this but this one does and they are 15 millimeter heads and there's five of them three up top two down here next up we're gonna take loose the outer tie rods this is a 18 millimeter deep socket we'll loosen these up and then we're just gonna have to hit it with a hammer or something to get it out of out of the little socket here now if you're not replacing these you don't want to really hit that with a hammer too hard because it will mess up the threads so if you're going to do that maybe leave the nut on it or just hit it right here on the knuckle and that'll also help it break loose okay so i have the nut off and because we're not reusing this we have brand new outer links or outer tie rods i'm just going to go ahead and hit it with a hammer there's no rust on here this truck's been taken care of so hopefully it'll pop right out just like that just like that also you have grease fittings on your steering and suspension parts be sure to put some grease in those every once in a while. That'll keep your stuff lasting longer because what's going to end up wearing these out is no lubrication. You have metal to metal contact and it just wears out. So two shots of grease, three shots. You don't need it towards bulging the, the whole rubber boot off. I mean, that's, that's silly. You just want a couple of shots of grease in there. Maybe uh, once a year, maybe once every two years. We got the passenger side outer tie rod loose just like the driver's side and then taking the lines loose the lower one you can see down here that's the lower high pressure line right there that's an 18 millimeter you can get to it from the bottom the top one is also an 18 millimeter for the low pressure line but it is hard to get to so if you have a and if you have an 18 crow's foot 18 millimeter line wrench crow's foot you get it off but what we did is we just took the line loose because it's low pressure there's just a clamp and then the hose slid right off 
and then we'll switch that to the new rack once it's out. All right, so to keep from making a mess, we're gonna take the plug out of the new rack and pinion, put it in the old one, so as we're taking the old rack and pinion out of the truck, we don't lose fluid onto the driveway. All right, we're about to take the steering shaft loose from the rack and pinion, and what I did here is just bungee cord the steering wheel because there's a clock spring inside of here, and if the steering wheel gets to turn in back and forth on its own, it'll break that clock spring. So we're gonna set it up centered, where the the wheels were centered or straight forward and just have this hold it so it'll stay there while we're working okay the steering shaft comes down meets the the rack and pinion right here this is a an 11 millimeter or 7 16 whichever you want to use and just break it i broke it free with a ratchet now i'm using ratchet wrench to get it all the way out but we're going to take this all the way out and then our steering shaft hopefully it'll slide off easily of course it would yep. he and didn't, he didn't even want to be there nah. man i smell that fluid so this is the bolt that holds the steering shaft onto the rack or whatever anyway oh so, it's got loctite on it that's why oh and it's green yeah that green Loctite is something else. Them hammer knockers. All right. With that bolt out, this part right here of the steering shaft is just like a sleeve. So this piece comes out just like that. And it was super easy, which is fantastic. All right, I think we're ready to get the rack and pinion out. So we're underneath taking the rack out. You have 15 sixteenths on both sides. David's holding the nut with a wrench. I have the good old trusty impact. Nut down. That boat, that thing jumped straight off of there. He gone. I said, I won't be here no more. Does it look like magic's about to happen? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna slide this one right here. You wanna hold that side? Come on. I don't think he's gonna come out because of the, yeah. He doesn't come out because of the sway bar. So you, I pull him this far, and then you should be able to pull the rack that way. And we have a rack out, guys. We didn't see this ground strap right here, 13 millimeter. Get this off, then we can come out. Okay, we have the new rack here, and we have a little bit of noise, the neighbors lawn service showed up but the new rack here old rack here we're going to need to change over the ground strap to the new one also need to take the low pressure fitting off put it on the new one and then we have our new outer tie rod new outer tie rod comes with a boot a jam nut new oil fit or grease fitting and the new one comes with a castle nut the factory unit had lock nuts so just keep that in mind and then to install these some people will count the number of turns of the old one coming off and then put the new one on that amount of turns you can also just find a solid point say the part of the frame there part of the rack and then measure it to the end of the tie rod you know whatever you just want it to be close of course, the alignment shop's gonna take care of the details once they get it, because you will have to get an alignment after this is done. Dave is just using a 10 millimeter socket to get that ground strap off. And then, like I said before, this is gonna be an 18 millimeter. So we're switching over the ground cable to the new unit. And as you can see, the vent line that goes from side to side 
is bent on this one and clears the bolt. Well, the Napa unit is a straight piece of tube, which is actually too short. I mean, it, it gives you like an eighth of an inch. And that's about it. But anyway, it blocks the ground there. So we might just find a different way to ground it because uh, we're not gonna get another piece of tube and like bend it around that. And if you try to turn these, this clamp is so tight that there's no way to turn it. So we're gonna figure out a just a different way to ground it. And in all actuality, once the outer tie rod's on and installed, it's gonna ground through all that stuff. So this is just a, another way of grounding it, which I don't, I don't see to be necessary, but uh, it's on there. So we're gonna try to put, put some kind of ground back on it. So that's a, what you deal with when you have aftermarket parts. Okay, so we took loose the low pressure fitting and with the package, with the new rack comes new O-rings. And on the high pressure side, there's an O-ring the same. So just make sure you pop that off, pop the new O-ring on before installing into the new rack. So it just pops off like that. It's already cut open. Stage it up for you. Yeah, looks good. 18 millimeter. Tighten it up. Have the new jam nut on. Now we're just installing the new outer tie rod. All right, so our new tie rods are jam full of grease, as you can see. So we don't need to grease them. We just need to install our grease fitting. Tighten it up with a eight mil, which I've seen these things all kind of different sizes, so you never know what you're gonna get. And then install your boot. And then, I'll, I'll tighten that in a second. Over here, don't forget on your original unit, you have these little plates. They're on both sides. So, uh, it's pressed in there, but anyway, I gotta get that out. And you see that diameter's bigger? That's because that's pressed all the way through. So, got it, one on each side. Go ahead and get that out and swap it over as well. Here's what those little caps look like. I just pried them off with this little pry bar. And then behind it, you're gonna have a little piece of rubber. So that'll go on there. And then this will go on. And probably just get a little rubber mallet and tap them in there. There you go, just like that. We got three more to do. We have everything switched over have our little plates put on there one thing i want to mention is these things should come centered but by some chance if you get one that's not centered what you want to do is turn the rack and pinion one way doesn't matter left or right lock it out and then turn it the other way lock it out and count the number of turns lock to lock and then turn it back to where it's centered so if you have five turns or one way or five turns throughout the range you just want to come back two and a half turns that'll center you and you can put it in the vehicle centered because that's how we took out the old one that one. Yep. washer in the nut And now we can tighten her up. We don't have to turn the air back on. So David suggested we go ahead and put on the pressure line, low pressure, high pressure line, before tightening the bolts on the rack. That way we have just about an inch more room of rack movement. And that did make it easier. So we installed new O-ring on the high pressure line end and then tightened it up to the rack using an 18 millimeter and then the low pressure slid on with a clamp. So now we're gonna go ahead and tighten up the two main bolts for the rack underneath. We have our two big bolts here tightened up 15 16 We use the impact on this side and a wrench on the other side, just like we took it off. So that's tight. Hey, that says made in the USA. Anyways, 
Next up, we got to reattach our new outer uh, tie rods there. I'm on the passenger side, gonna attach this outer side tie rod using the supplied castle nut. If you're not, not uh, familiar with castle nuts, there's a hole on the stud here and you just line up one of the grooves. When, once you get it tight, line up one of the grooves with the hole and then your cotter pin will go right through that. David went ahead and got this one tight and you can see right there the hole is lined up with the castle nut. Then you can just put the pin through and then you're gonna get the pin and bend it over. That will keep, oh, sorry, I had the camera off. That will keep the nut from spinning off. Once David gets done tightening the passenger side, we can go ahead and move on to putting the steering shaft onto the new rack and put the bolt in. So what the bolt does is, let's see, here's our bolt. We'll walk over to the old unit. So your shaft slides on and then see this little divot here? That's where this bolt keeps the shaft from sliding out or sliding off. So that's what the bolt the bolt does. And there's a like a slot or not a, like an open area, so it clamps down onto the shaft as well. So there's two two ways that this bolt helps hold the steering shaft onto the rack. Okay, David has the bolt here. We went ahead and put some red Loctite. There was green on it from the factory, but Red's that's plenty. A, that's a bit overkill. And you can see down there, he's about to slide it on. There's a notch on the shaft. You can just slide it right over, just like that. And then the bolt will go in. Tighten it up, nice and tight. There might be torque specifications. Look it up. Um, I'm confident in my skills, and I tighten them to what I feel is right. So check up, check check online find specs if you want to but uh we're just gonna tighten it up we just did a little walk around we got that nut no that bolt tight on the steering shaft and for an exception of the skid plate there i think we're we're good to go we have the outer tie rods the main um you actually need to forgot to mention this make sure the jam nut's tight so jam nut these are tight the main bolts are tight for the rack. We're gonna go ahead and crank it up, check the fluid level. The rack looked like it was absolutely full of fluid. I'm, I'm sure they probably did a, a test at the factory, but we'll crank it up, turn it lock to lock a few times. And if it's whining, that's an air bubble in it. You just need to keep working it, make sure the fluid level's up. And eventually that air bubble will get out of there. We're gonna do it with the tires off the ground that way there's no load on that steering system and the bubbles can get worked out without the pump or the rack going dry if it might with load on it so we're gonna do it without a load go ahead and fire it up check the fluid if we need to we'll add a little bit No squealing. Must have been full of fluid from the factory. Just wanted to show you guys something real quick. These things are always super tight. We're just taking it off so it fits in the box. This is the old unit. But trying to, trying to do this number right here is pretty much a pain. And what I was taught is if you can clock them about like that and squeeze them together, you have a lot more power so you can get these things broke loose. That's what I just had to do. Just wanted to show you guys that real quick. But uh, anyways, we're gonna take this one off. I already got the other side off. And this has to go back to Napa for $150 core charge. Other than that, tires are back on, torque to 100 foot pounds on the lug nuts. And as you can see, David's tires are shot. 
he's going to get a new set of tires and then go straight to the alignment shop. This truck is not going to be driven like this, but for just a few miles because it has to have an alignment. But, uh, yep, project's done. Okay, guys, that is the project for today. Before we go, I wanted to mention to you that we did this whole project with the back tires blocked, which I forgot to mention, and also the e-brake on, on the truck. So we did end up making a little bit of a mess on the driveway. Go ahead and hit that with the full strength super clean today. <laughs> Get that cleaned up. Got the water hose out, ready to go. Still have the kayak out from yesterday. So be editing a video for the Fish on Tap channel. So that'll be coming out hopefully tomorrow. And then as far as Mr. Jones goes, I made a call about our brake line tools because I need to borrow a flare tool. Hadn't heard back yet. So probably get into some wiring and stuff next. So I think that's about where we stand with this. But anyway, that's going to do it for us today, guys. Hope this helped you with your projects at home or anything else. Uh, just enjoyment of watching it <laughs> but anyway that's gonna do it see y'all guys next time